Hi folks, how are you doing? Well done, congratulations. Thank you. What I noticed today, I've just come from the House of Commons where we were questioning David Miliband. Yay! He's supposed to boo actually, but carry on. <laughs> um, questioning him about a lot of things. It was interesting that the number of members of Parliament of all parties who got up and asked questions who have never shown the slightest knowledge, interest or concern about Palestine or Gaza or anything before, it shows that the public manifestations of anger about Gaza are working. It shows the email campaign is working. It shows the importance of keeping up that pressure all the time. So just because there is a um, sort of ceasefire at the moment, that's not a reason not to demonstrate. That's not a reason not to act. It's every reason to demonstrate, act, march and call for justice for the people of Palestine. And the point that I put to Mr. Miliband in my question was that over the past three weeks, 1,200 Palestinians have died in Gaza, 400 of whom I understand are children, 5,800 people are seriously injured, tens of thousands have lost their homes, tens of thousands of people are desperately frightened and worried of a population, most of whom have been unemployed for a very long time, most of whom are medically depressed because of the lockdown and occupation that's gone on for years. You enjoy being in university. You enjoy living in London. You enjoy your right to political campaigning. If you were residents of Gaza, if you managed to get to university, it would be a daily turmoil of checkpoints, fear and intimidation. Your view of the world would be vicariously through a TV screen when the electricity is on, or a computer while the battery is running, or mobile phone and text messages. There is something deeply horrifying and wrong about the ability of all of us to watch a war on television, to watch the destruction of a people on television, to receive texts from ISM and other monitors describing a bombing that is going on and we can do nothing about it, apart from march, meet and demonstrate. And so, this attack should not be seen as some kind of Israeli reasonable and proportionate response to Hamas rockets. As Gerald Kaufman pointed out in the House of Commons today, the death rate is 100 to 1 Palestinians compared to the death of Israelis. I'm not in favour of the death of anybody, by the way, in case anyone should seek to misquote what I'm saying. I'm just pointing out the sheer disproportionate nature of this. I'm also calling for the strongest immediate, I mean immediate, investigation into the use of illegal weapons and war crimes by the Israeli forces in Gaza. A number of things have occurred. One is, there has been, and this has been declared by successive United Nations officials, disproportionate action. There's also been the uh, imprisonment of the people of Gaza that amounts to collective punishment, illegal under the Fourth Geneva Convention. On top of that, there's the construction of the illegal wall, declared so by the World Court. There is a great deal of documentary evidence that white phosphorus bombs have been used, cluster bombs have been used, and depleted uranium has been used. Take those in succession. White phosphorus is designed to burn at incredible heat. It is impossible to put it out with any kind of normal fire extinguisher, even if such a thing was available, or even a fire engine. It's designed to burn bodies and burn people. On top of that, the Israeli forces, I understand from evidence that's been sent to me, have been re-bombing the places where white phosphorus was used in order to try and destroy the evidence that would be there in the first place of possibly the charred remains of bodies. That, to me, smacks of a kind of evil, macabre thinking process that can do such a thing. Secondly, the use of cluster bombs. Cluster bombs are now declared illegal, as you probably know, give off hundreds if not thousands of bomblets that remain unexploded for a very long time. 
the children of tomorrow, of the Gaza of tomorrow, will be maimed and killed by unexploded cluster bombs. And thirdly, depleted uranium. In its inert state, depleted uranium is simply a very heavy metal. But when it's accompanied by a fire, it gets set off the equivalent of a localised nuclear fallout explosion. That will lead to the cancers of tomorrow. Look at the cancer rates in southern Iraq. Not from this war, but from the Gulf War of 1991. And you'll see the horrors of what's going on. Those are just three lots of war crimes. On top of that, the bombing of United Nations facilities, schools, food convoys, the bombing of mosques, the bombing of houses, the shelling of apartment blocks. That is not done by accident, it's not done by mistake, it's not done by a machine gun, it is done by carefully targeted, GPS guided missiles designed to destroy that particular location. So you have to ask yourself, what is going on in the mind of somebody that is carefully inputting the coordinates of the United Nations school in order to destroy the building and kill people within it. So we have to do everything we can. I am very angry that our government and others acted too late on getting a United Nations resolution but Israel then proceeded to violate that United Nations resolution, as it has many others. Therefore, sanctions should follow. One, absolutely no arms sales, parts, equipment, supplies of any sort, of any description, should leave this country and go to Israel. Secondly, the uh, UN, uh, sorry, the EU trade agreement with Israel has within it a human rights clause. That human rights clause has been breached. Therefore, not only should we not allow Israel to gain associate status with uh, the European Union, we should suspend the EU-Israel trade agreement so that Israel gets an economic punishment for its war crimes against the people of Gaza. I have been involved in many, many demonstrations all over London, all over the country. In, in this past few weeks. And I'm amazed and delighted by the turnout, the understanding, and the sheer anger and sheer thirst for decency of ordinary people of all walks of life, all faiths, and all religions in this. This is not a question of faith. This is a question of humanity. This is a question of supporting the Palestinian people. And it's been my honor and privilege to share platforms with people from the Muslim, in Muslim Initiative in Britain, with Jews for Justice for Palestine, with people of no faith and no religion, because we're in this together to demand an end to the war that won't be achieved by some phony ceasefire, it won't be achieved by the British Navy being involved in some kind of blockade of Gaza, it will only be achieved when the historic right of the people of Palestine, the Palestinian people, to be able to return home and live in peace in their own land is actually realised. Let's give our support to the people of Palestine. And can I say thank you very much to those students of the LSE who have taken part in this occupation, shown your determination to stand up for the people of Palestine and the students of Palestine who want the right to live the lives that we enjoy ourselves. Thank you very much.